I'm talking to Ambassador Ronaldo Sardenberg. He's president of Anatel, which is uh, Brazil's national agency for telecommunications. Now, Brazil is one of the, the famous BRIC countries that uh, are meant to be the future economic powerhouses, thanks to their, their large populations and relatively cheap labor and, and industry. How, how do you see the future of ICTs panning out in Brazil? Because already ICTs count for between 5 and 7% of, of GDP. Is this an area that you see growing a great deal in the future? Yes, for sure. In fact, our effort regarding the ICTs comes from um, years. Not, it's not a recent effort we are, that we are making. So, uh, and as there is demand for ICTs, I mean, I think that the main uh, point to be taken into consideration is the, the fact that there is an aggressive demand for ICTs, for telecommunications, so on and so forth. This is really what uh, makes the show work. And how does this aggressive demand manifest itself? Is it mobile uptake or internet uptake or mobile internet uptake? Well, mobile, mobile internet uptake for sure. I mean, this is coming and this is the fastest, sec fastest growing sector uh, in, in telecommunications in Brazil. But mobile by themselves, I mean, they are now in this year 180 million mobile accesses in Brazil. This means that Brazil is the fifth market in the world for mobile access. And, uh, this sh and then there is enormous uh, disposition on the part of, uh, of the consumers to, to change <laughs> their telephone sets. Brazil is a very large country uh, with many different communities spread out. Are you reaching all those communities or are we mainly talking about the urban areas? Well, I'll tell you, we are reaching today 37,000 37, localities in Brazil. So uh, this is quite uh, striking in the sense that, uh, uh, I mean, I'm speaking about localities or even of a less that has less than, that have less than 100 inhabitants. So, I mean, this is widespread uh, effort. Uh, for instance, in schools, we have a plan for schools, connect, connection in schools, which started last year. And we have uh, connected about uh, uh, 42,000 schools already, urban schools. Uh, and in this, plan is, uh, this plan is very interesting because it is to, to connect 65,000 schools till the end of this year. And for a period of, uh, free of charge for a period of 18 years. You see, so <laughs> this, is, this was a matter of negotiation between the government itself and the private enterprise. So this is interesting in terms that shows that it is possible to find negotiated solutions to big problems. So you make this a requirement when you grant a telecommunications license. You say, if you want this license, you also have to connect these schools and do it for free. What we are doing much more is to, to establish coverage uh, requirements. You see, if you have the, the Sao Paulo city, you have to, for instance, with 3G, you have to provide 2G for the Amazon region to the whole north of Brazil. It's an enormous area, 5 million square kilometers. That's the way it, it, it operates. And the trend is towards uh, every time uh, we go to, to tender, uh, to try to, to create con uh, conditions for, for the tender. I mean, lower the price and uh, imposing conditions. Imposing is a bad word. I mean, in fact, usually they are, they are negotiated as between uh, Anatel in this case and the private enterprise. One theme that seems to be coming up in some of the interviews is, is the notion in bringing in um, or con connecting either indigenous communities or marginalized communities. Now, you've got plenty of those in, yes. in Brazil, what's happening? What's the picture there? Well, there, there we are starting a plan right now. I mean, we are concluding this plan for r uh, urban, urban schools. We are creating a plan for rural schools and also a plan for connecting these communities, which are many and uh, spread all over the country. Say, for instance, there are 300,000 uh, uh, tribal natives the natives who live in tribes. And uh, this is one kind of community that we want to, to reach and we are start, we have already started reaching them, but we must do it in a massive scale. 
But then there are Afro descendants, which is a story which is not often told by the press. So we have about uh, people who were former descendants of former slaves that for decades, I mean, for, for years and years and years, have li lived in isolated uh, locations, including in the forest. So we have about a thousand groups of that nature. So uh, in these people, we want to provide access to them in order for them to better their conditions of life. I mean, they, need, they need support on the part of the, the society and of the economy. One of the big efforts now is training, is capacity building. So, so even at our agency, we are doing an enormous effort in terms of uh, increasing capacities of people. And is that working out? Because it is vital that people are able to um, use the equipment or whatever that is, that is on the ground themselves, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you see, I uh, talked about schools. A large number of those schools are in very remote areas. I mean, municipalities in the hinterland. Well, we must train the teachers, at least. Uh, we must train people that will do the maintenance of this system also. So this is really a concern. I mean, uh, it doesn't mean if you connect this, this is the beginning of your problems, actually, <laughs> because you take, take the knowledge of the, of the problems much, much, much faster. And then you have to react also to these problems. That's what we are trying to do.